Hi everybody! Today there are two new plugins and two improvements. So let's start with the improvements. In the Reaper forum there was this comment um, by X-Men to you um, who said um, that he loves the denoiser sound wise but the problem is that it introduces latency that Reaper is not compensating for and um, the tracks will be out of timing. And as I answered um, I thought I already fixed that in the old version of the denoiser, but I had a look at the code again and yes, I fixed it now. And somebody wrote in the um, YouTube comments, uh, I just want to denoise my guitars and it's not working and I get a strange uh, delay or reverb or something. So let's get over this again. So here we have a, a playback for um, a solo guitar and now we only hear the playback. Okay, beautiful. So now let me unmute the guitar and I recorded a guitar with a lot of noise. And as we can tell, this noise on this playback is very annoying. So now what we want to do is we search some uh, part of the recording where only the noise is happening and we make a loop maybe this part because a bit later uh, you hear how I grab the guitar and this would not be suitable so only the noise and now we insert the black denoiser and we hit play and then we hit detect So now the noise is detected, we can remove it a bit more, like this. And now we can hear the guitar on the playback without the noise. Of course, a bit of the noise is left because I recorded it with such an amount of noise that you can't really remove it without um, it's getting audible that you removed the noise. So I can um, turn up this reduct thing, but the guitar will um, sound a bit strange then. But then um, the noise is gone. But let's stay in a reasonable um, reduction level. And now if I hit play back and bypass a wireless plane, you hear the huge difference it makes. And if I now render this take to a new take with these settings from the black denoiser, we can turn that off now. And um, yeah. We hear if it is in sync with the music. Yes, it is. So the denoiser should be usable now. And there's another improvement. And this is for the new plugins, the LA2 can and the NC76 series 2. Klang Magnet made a test with um, oversampling of the plugins and they should work oversampled. And yes, this is why I make this series too, to get rid of some things in the old plugins that need to be improved. That was about graphics and grouping and stuff and also oversampling. So uh, in the old, not series two version of the plugin, there are um, strange things happening when you oversample the plugin. So um, it sounds uh, different different, uh, the sidechain filter is higher and um, other things. So um, that's why I made this um, Series 2 plugin, where the only report is that the gain reduction meter um, is much slower at higher sample rates. So yes, I improved the meters so that they always have the same speed um, at all sample rates. 
So now let's get to the new plugins, which can give you some, some call it mojo, others would call it vintage vibe, and others would call it dirt, whatever. We're talking about tape. And I made some test recordings on some tape machines and compared them to um, results others published on the internet to get an idea of what has the impact on what we call tape sound. The first thing that we would recognize is that a tape machine has not a flat frequency response. And the frequency response depends on which speed we would select. The second thing would be the um, tape saturation. There are a lot of people telling you that um, this tape itself does saturation, but in my observation, um, it can easily capture all the input signals and the saturation itself comes from the input gain stage. So before you get a real amount of tape saturation, you would overdrive the input stage. But still the input stage gives you saturation, of course. And the third big factor of which gives us an impact on the sound is um, the tape itself. So um, the tape, how old it is, how often it has been used and things like that. Let's open this thing for seeing some things. So every time that you use the tape and play it back or fast forward or rewind the tape and things like that, um, it will get a bit stretched. And in long term, that leads to tape inconsistencies. Other inconsistencies um, are made by another fact, and that is if you play back this tape, this roller here touches the, or doesn't touch the capstan because the tape is in the way. So the tape touches the roller and the capstan for the tape transport, and the tape will touch the um, erasing head and the record and playback head, or erase head, record, play, uh, record and playback head, so um, that this tape will wear off every time you um, play back. And these tape inconsistencies lead to wow and flutter and noise and other fancy side effects. So let's see how it looks as a plugin. So this is the Toucan Tape Recorder Series 2. And here we can see the elements that have an impact on the tape sound overall. So here we have the tape speed. So from um, high speed to um, regular uh, consumer mode speed. We have the in drive, which means um, how hard will we hit the input stage of the tape machine. And here we have um, how old or how used or one off our tape is. So from a brand new tape uh, with a first recording on it to a very used old tape, you can um, set this knob. And when you turn up this knob, the noise, of course, will get louder. So um, if you want the old tape sound without this annoying um, noise, you can denoise uh, the tape here again. And this is just an overall output trim. So let me reset uh, the knobs and um, take this to new and this to high speed. And uh, by now it is bypassed. Um, let's hear a piece of piano music without the plugin. So now let's uh, enable this plugin. And we have um, no tape drive, and um, we have a brand new tape, and it sounds like this. That's not so much a difference. So let's turn on this in drive. And it would say, well, that's not a difference either. But um, we can use this um, delta solo to hear what is happening with the tape. And you'll immediately hear that there is a lot of stuff happening. So what we can hear is uh, some distortion um, from the input stage of the um, tape machine. So if I turn that down, we don't hear that distortion. And if I turn it up, 
there's a bit of distortion that we hear, or that we don't hear if it's not in delta mode, but it makes a difference in the overall sound. So um, let's get to the um, tape inconsistencies. If I turn that all the way up, we have the old tape. And well, yes, that's a difference. So let's hear the difference again. So you can definitely, um, in the delta mode, hear the um, tape inconsistencies. And the denoiser is um, at 50%. So um, if I turn that to 0%, we get a lot of tape noise here. So maybe we get this to new tape and check the um, other speed, the lower speed. Again, without the plugin. So you see, you can have a lot of fun with tape. So let's now get to the second new old plugin. And this is the Tucan Studios Varibus Series 2. And for the first demonstration, I have a drum loop for you or a drum sample. And um, this Variabus is a Varimu compressor and that's a special kind of compression so you don't have a threshold and ratio and attack and release and everything you know from other compressors because Varimu compressors compress it in a way that the louder the signal gets, the higher the ratio gets too. And it's a unit that originally has tons of tubes in it so we have the tube input stage, which is um, this input gain uh, knob, and the tube output stage, which is this knob here. And then we have the compressor controls. And this would be mm, the threshold, so um, at which levels it will start to compress. And we have the time constants. So um, these are on six positions. Um, we have a fast attack and a fast release and a fast attack and a not so fast release and slower attacks. And we have the auto modes where um, the release times adjust themselves depending on the material that is coming in. And additionally, um, there's a high pass for the detector. We will see that soon. And um, we can tweak this very new um, behavior. So at 100%, you will have more drastic ratio changes than at 0%. And in this plugin, uh, you can see we have all the controls twice, and this is because you can use it in stereo mode, so they will always be uh, linked, and um, you can forget about the second controls, um, but you can also have it in dual mode, which will process the left and the right channel independently. And for all who like to do so, there is also a mid and side mode. In dual and mid and side mode, the controls are now unlinked, so um, you can process left and right or mid and side uh, to your wishes. But if you want to turn the knobs together, um, hold Alt and uh, turn a knob and it will turn the knobs together. For all who would say that is a hidden feature, no, it is not. It's in the info field. Link left and right knobs with Alt. And of course you can link the um, controls permanently um, by clicking this LED for Link Master on the left channel or Link Master on the right channel. Um, this is made because um, if you have automation on a control for one channel and you want the other control uh, and you want the other channel to follow, uh, you have to select the correct channel for the automation things. So enough talking. Let's hear um, how it can sound uh, with this drums. Let's give it some more compression. Mm -hmm. 
And what we can hear is that the kick drum is um, hitting the um, compressor very hard. So um, maybe we use the um, detector high pass filter so that the um, kick drum will not hit it so hard, but the rest will hit it as it was. And maybe tweak that to 100%. And you see that the snare is now compressing more. So enough of drum samples, let's try this on vocals. For all the times that you rain on my parade And all the clubs you get in using my name You think you broke my heart, oh girl for goodness sake you think I'm crying on my own? Well, I ain't. So you hear um, there's a lot of uh, compression going on already, um, but it's not really audible because um, this is a very gentle, nice way to compress signals with a very mu compressor. And here again, let's try the um, compensation things and hear uh, some of the distortion so you can really um, distort uh, things in a way that, um, yeah gives you very much distortion on vocals, for, for example. For all the times that you rain on my parade And all the clubs you get in music You think you broke my heart, oh girl, for goodness sake You think I'm crying on my own when I ain't And I didn't want to write a song Cause I didn't want anyone thinking I still care I don't but and now I turned the time constants to position 3. Um, for vocals it's sometimes good to have a slower release. So now we've played around a bit with that plugin. Um, one thing I didn't mention is um, that these um, tubes here now uh, start to, to glow more or less depending on the signal. Let's see that again. For all the times that you rain my parade and all the clubs you get. And I thought this is a funny little animation there. Of course, I know it's nonsense because tubes are not light bulbs. And if you find this annoying and don't like this animation, well, um, you can turn that up from the um, tubes menu here. So that's it for today. I know that there is always the risk for bugs in initial releases. So if you find any issues, please report. And as always, have fun with the plugins and bye bye.